Hello, good evening, good morning, and good afternoon to everyone joining from dif different time zones. I am Fazan Mukti, your host for this conversation hour. I warmly welcome you all to the 16th DCW conversation hour, a monthly open conversation hour by the Deoband Community Wikimedia. As many of you know, Deoband Community Wikimedia is a recognized but independent affiliate of the Wikimedia Foundation. It focuses on representation of global Muslim. DCW has been recognized by Wikimedia Affiliations Committee in January 2022, and it has since then established a range of programs and initiatives in order to achieve its objectives. And I am happy to underline that this particular series conversation are, is one of its initiatives. And for today, we are excited to have Praveen Das, who is the lead partnerships manager for, for South Asia at the Wikimedia Foundation, where he pursues strategic opportunities to work with mission-aligned companies, non-profit operating at the intersection of technology and education to advance the free knowledge mission as part of his role. Our speaker has an experience of more than 14 years and has also worked with Google as a program manager for over eight years. In today's conversation, we will explore the dynamics of uh, partnerships, ethics, and strategies behind successful collaborative programs. And we will look into how to create a shared resource for Wikimedia entities to help them develop toolkits for these programs. As we know, partnerships and collaborations significantly impact our movement. And I'm certain that uh, this particular uh, converse conversation is bound to generate many new insights regarding how to collaborate and uh, partnership. A little disclaimer before I uh, uh, hand over the virtual mic, so to say, to Praveen. Uh, this uh, recording is being uh, recorded. Uh, this sorry, this uh, conversation is being recorded. And uh, if uh, you have an issue with that, you may please. Switch off your cameras over to you, Praveen. We are looking forward. Thank you, Fazan. I hope everybody is able to hear me um, well. I'm sorry if my internet is not, um, you know, in a, uh, is not giving a proper bandwidth. There has been some outages recently, you know, in my area. Hopefully it's, you're able to hear me and also will be able to see my screen fine. Um, I will be, you know, showing presentation in this uh, today's, um um uh, you know meeting um in the uh, you know to talk more about partnership dynamics and um, ethical collaboration strategies but before i do that i uh, would share you know two cents about me as fazan said you know i'm praveen das i'm currently based in uh, lucknow uttar pradesh uh, it's famous for kebabs so if you happen to be here do try that out and um, the culture of Nawabi the culture of Lucknow is also pretty famous for hospitality. Um, I have been working with Foundation for almost five years now. And it has been a great journey. Uh, it was quite inspiring to see Wikimedians like, uh, you know, Indian Wikimedians and other Wikimedians like you contribute towards a common goal of creating a, you know, a, a, a um, a free open repository for all and in today's um, uh, you know meeting we'll be discussing more about um, how we can collaborate with different organizations and what these you know ethical collaboration strategies look like I would just share my experience with you all let me know at any given point it becomes too heavy um, and you wanted to wanted me to make it a bit lighter I'd be happy to do that. Now, talking about, you know, Wikimedia Foundation, I hope you all know, uh, Wikimedia Foundation is a non-profit organization founded in 2001 that operates Wikipedia and the other Wikimedia free knowledge projects. And I'm part of the regional partnerships team. I, um, the lead partnerships 
uh, manager at uh, Wikimedia Foundation. Um, and I take care of the South Asia uh, region. Through partnerships, our team, you know, with governments, tech companies, nonprofit, and other um, stakeholders around the globe, we try to expand Wikipedia's reach and Wikipedia and sister projects' reach through participation, um, ensure, you know, continuous technological advancement of Wikimedia Free Knowledge Project. Along with that, we ensure distribution of uh, the content which is being prepared by the editors. Now, the goal is to form partnership that serve the common vision of, you know, free knowledge for all uh, people. And I'm quite excited to discuss, you know, a uh, crucial topic of ethical collaboration with you today. Um, our focus is definitely going to be on understanding the, uh, you know, dynamics of partnership within Wikimedia ecosystem, um, but with also, uh, you know, touching upon with uh, real life examples that demonstrate uh, impact of ethical collaboration. This is uh, the small, uh, you know, um, regional partnerships team and my colleagues. Where uh, the partnerships, you know, has been, is, is a very critical, you know, component of any organization, any movement. And with this, uh, we try to source, develop and maintain WMF partnerships across wide range of stakeholders. It could be with anyone, as I mentioned. Uh, like device manufacturers. So promoting our native application on device manufacturers in emerging marketing, in emerging markets like India. We collaborated with uh, Geo uh, on Geo phones, got our application, uh, uh, you know, launched on Geo store. Along with it, it is also surfaced on Geo books, which is a low cost uh, laptops, you know, devices for um, for the people in India. Then we also focuses on the reuses, uh, re, you know, reuses of wiki uh, content. So Wikipedia preview integrations for journalism and edtech could be one of the example. Example could be also with coordinating with Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and other uh, you know stakeholders. It could be also around you know integrating. Uh, Wikipedia APIs or Wikidata APIs to fetch audio-based results, you know, on geo devices as well. We also collaborate with um, civil societies. An example would be Tran Tran Train University students in MENA to join the Wikimedia movement. Uh, this was held, uh, you know, led by my colleague uh, Rudolf in the region. And the example was to, uh, you know, build capacity of African organizers to contribute to Wikimedia. Then UN agencies were, you know, bringing WHO COVID-19 information to Commons. You all might have met, witnessed uh, back in 2020 when uh, the COVID was in high rise. There was a dire need of seeking information, right set of information. And these information was possible you know, through uh, by collaboration with the UN agencies back then, where, you know, they participated in, uh, we participated in UNICEF mentioning for young content creation creators as well. Um, also, we collaborate with government, like making educational content available to teachers and students with the Colombian Ministry of Education. A recent collaboration is, uh, you know, was with, uh, with the Ministry of uh, Culture, Department of Language and Culture, uh, Government of uh, Telangana, where we assisted uh, uh, Telugu community to have a collaboration with the department to get their rich content on Telugu wikis. Now, we all know, you know, everything has been driven by a mission and a vision. So, what it says, like, all of Wikipedia's work is, you know, kind of driven by the mission vision that says, um, you know, a world in which every single human can freely share and participate in knowledge. So what drives us is the belief that everyone can benefit from free knowledge and everyone has something to contribute. I believe when you started your journey, definitely, uh, you know, this was 
um, one priority in your mind uh, while you're contributing on, on the platform, that citizen will be better informed, you know, that the student will learn their subjects more thoroughly, uh, that the job seekers you know, will find um, critical information about the industry on wiki platforms, and you know, people will be held accountable for it. And in 2017, the Wikimedia movement got together and produced a strategic you know, direction, which kind of direct the partnerships team here in foundation as well, which says by 2030, Wikimedia, um, you know, will become the essential infrastructure of ecosystem um, of free knowledge and anyone who share our vision will be able to join us. So with this, it um, helps in strategizing our uh, our uh, uh, you know decisions around collaborations we wanted to make and um, we ensure that you know these are the guiding principles you know which we follow now coming back to the topic of ethical collaboration you know you are here to hear about it so definitely i would want to touch upon it it's going to be a bit theoretical as well i'm sorry you know um, for taking you back to the classroom session. But then, um, what is ethical collaboration? I think it'll be better if you make it, you know, more interactive. Um, so how many of us are there in the room right now? And nine participants. Would it make sense for us to make it interactive or would you just want me to just go through each slides and probably later on, interact with you all. Would you like to drop in a quick comment or unmute and speak? Yes, okay. interactive as Afi uh, has said, it would be interesting. Great. Great. Right. So let me ask this question to you all. What do you mean by ethical collaboration? I don't want to call out, you know, people, but in general, just please feel free to unmute and talk. Hey, hi. Hi, Nikita. Hey, hi. Ethical collaborations could be uh, collaborations that basically benefit both the sides. Okay, great. It's just, yeah, <laughs> putting it down. Okay. And um, that that's great, you know. It's a collaboration which is beneficial to both. Like any partnership which we get into, has to be you know win-win situation for both both the organization. Uh, and uh, when it comes to ethical collaboration, we it is kind of driven by key principles, which is written here, like transparency, inclusivity, mutual benefit, and integrity. Right. So. Collaboration is the um, cornerstone of progress, you know, whether it is in business, academia, or, uh, you know, creative endeavor or working together, uh, you know, in, in anything which allow us to achieve more than, you know, we could attain individually. So, um, however, collaboration isn't always straightforward. It is, it's always a bit tricky. Uh, you know, it involves navigating complex dynamics, power imbalances, and conflicting interests sometimes. So ethical collaboration, you know, forms the foundation of any successful partnership. It, uh, it you know, it, it consists of uh, principles, um, as I mentioned, like transparency, inclusivity, mutual benefit, and, and, um, and integrity. Where these principles, you know, kind of guide us in building relationships that are not only effective, but also ethical and sustainable. Sustainable and ethical is the key. You know, any partnership which is uh which is not thought, you know, from a sustainability angle doesn't last, you know, for a long term. So what do we mean when we say transparency? 
what is transparency in the ethical collaboration? What sort of transparency are we expecting, you know, when we get into a partnership? Um, may I? Yeah, oh. yeah. Hi, Praveen. Good to see you here. Uh -huh. So uh, when you talk of transparency, the first word that comes to my mind is um, being answerable and accountable to the work that is being done, the collaboration that is being made. So having that accountability and answer, answer um, what would the word be? Uh, being answerable to uh, the people, the team who are involved in the process is what I feel uh, would transparency mean? Absolutely. Like our communities and our work, you know, everything is an open, we rely on transparency. Similarly, when we get into any agreements, um, you know, any any uh, partnership, we expect that all agreements, um, um, you know, or the proposal has to be upfront. And ideally public, uh, you know, especially in our infrastructure, um, so that community also feel involved, right? So clear agreements, um, yeah, you know, from the start basically prevents misunderstandings later. So what happens in partnerships many times, you know, we strike an idea and we just go and we are like, hey, come on, this is good. Let's start working on it without even discussing uh, complexities around it. And later on at later stage, when the complexity starts surfacing, then we start feeling heat, you know, and the partners might feel, okay, this is something which has not been discussed or we were not made aware of. Um, hence, transparency is very critical. So what are goals? Uh, who will be responsible for what and um, who, um, you know, and how it will be shared? Um, so these are the few things which need to be clearly laid down, uh, you know, from the beginning. And that's what we mean by transparency in any ethical collaboration. Now, from an inclusivity perspective, you know, mutual benefit, this is, um, I'm sorry, I'm a little cold. Okay. Uh, yes, Sabdar, please go ahead. Um, yeah, hi. Okay, I just wanted to ask you, that, so basically what you said is that you are seeking transparency because you want the people to be involved. That is the prime goal you're seeking transparency. Is that the only goal? Okay, so transparency is not the only goal, right? The no, transparency uh, the reason, is... The reason for transparency is involvement of people. Is that the only goal you have in mind? Sorry, could you please uh, repeat again? The reason for transparency you quote it as so that people are involved. People feel that they're involved. Oh, no. So, so, no, so what are just... the reasons... Yeah. So, what are the reasons behind uh, transparency? This might this might be one of the goals. And I I I would, I, I would uh, perfectly so agree with that. Transparency could be one of the way through which people might feel involved, but this is not the only thing uh, which we need to maintain to involve people and in, or any organization. No, no, no. Uh, I mean, I don't say that transparency is the cause and involvement is the effect. But rather, I would say that is the. Uh, what we, what we seek is people's involvement and that is why we are looking at transparency. Is that the case? Are you kidding me? Partially yeah. right. Yes, partially okay, now, right. Now, when it so, comes so, to so, a... so that is yeah, yeah. So that yeah. is one of the reasons perhaps on that uh, right? No. Yes, so yes. so what are the other reasons if I may ask you? Okay. So let's take an example of um, you know not two individuals getting into something instead. Let's take an example where our community would want to work for an example with a library, you know, who have got a huge repository. Now, what sort of transparency you wanted? Yeah, probably you would want them to know about the policies around uh, credits, how it's going to work. You're going to tell them the, the library might be expecting, uh, you know, uh, that your community or Wikipedia might be help, you know, might uh, help them get publicized. But actually, that is something which is not going to happen, right? That's not how we work. So, it's uh, transparency means you know sharing uh, upfront, you know, the idea of how things works and how uh, transparent we are in terms of communicating that to the partners, you know, be it around how we will get their content online 
just an example with a library for an example you know what are their roles what will be our roles how the community works and uh, what are the technical challenges as well you know challenges around they need to you know issue a letter they might have to you know help them getting approvals so these things help you know in bringing transparency to the overall conversation which is essential in formulating any partnership conversation this last one small one line yes. uh, so perhaps what you mean is that the the the, the gradation or the, the degree of transparency is directly governed by uh, the the degree of involvement that you'd like to have people in it. so i want of oh, people want this kind of a certain level of involvement so perhaps we have uh, transparent we have to be transparent about the information to that degree which pro which provides them uh, the desired uh, you know information i think yeah, yeah. so that's how you design so finding it so uh, when it comes to degree of involvement especially you know from an institution collaboration perspective you would want uh, you know to ensure that there is a transparency not to ensure that there is a degree of involvement but to ensure that uh, you know there is a clarity in terms of what uh, you are getting into you know and the partners are getting into so it is fair to say that degree, you know, it's going to directly or indirectly impact the degree of involvement. Uh, but, you know, to explore any collaboration, this transparency helps not just in assessing, you know, uh, um, assessing, you know, pros and cons or identifying risk factor by laying down clearly, you know, what is ahead. Was able to answer your question? Ah, uh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I think I have uh, 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 an overview which I, uh, I mean, obviously, so that's great. yeah. I do appreciate right. your answer. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, the next component is uh, definitely around you know respect and credit. So, uh, uh, you know what happens? You know, partners they definitely wanted to work. They they wanted uh, they deserve a thanks. So imagine a scenario where somebody is coming and donating um, X, Y, Z number of books, you know, for Wikisource with definitely an expectation. An expectation is not going to be in terms of, hey, you know, put my label on every books when you publish, but it could be around, hey, can you publish, uh, uh, you know, it about we are the one who have donated. So there is definitely some sort of degree of expectation, but when, uh, you know, what Wikipedia content rules, you know, kind of apply to everyone and uh, we need to be clear about this. So partners deserve recognition, but uh, Wikipedia has its own standards. We can find, you know, creative ways to acknowledge contributions without compromising editorial independence. And that's when, uh, you know, our transparency factors again comes in where we have to ensure that these principles and guiding principles and our policies are clearly being shared with the partners and they understand how the movement works. The last component, you know, of integrity also comes with, you know, some of the challenges. Uh, we talk about, you know, collaborations, ideas sound good, people would want to get into it, but then, you know, don't shy away from potential issues which can come up. And it's always better to give a heads up to the uh, partner institution and talk more about you know these challenges which are lie lies ahead. So briefly discuss you know uh, 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 a resolve conflict example uh, uh, you know could be how we can navigate it ethically. Um, for an example, you know anything where we would require community consensus we need to do a community assessment. That could be a, you know, a clear example of uh, the challenges where we would want to go back to the community, seek their permission and, uh, and uh, you know, vote. Uh, and once things are clear, we would want to go ahead uh, with things. So laying down clearly, mentioning this, uh, 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 this to the partner is also part of the ethical collaboration process. So don't shy away from, you know, difficult topics when it comes to partnership. Uh, conflict of interest, partners, you know, wanting too much control. Uh, let's be honest, you know, these things happen. And uh, the key 
of is having a plan in place to address them ethically. And that's what, uh, you know, we need to be a bit aware of whenever we are getting into any collaborations. So that's a bit about, you know, ethical collaboration. Uh, we'll be moving ahead to the next uh, portion that is building trust and transparency. So um, as Sardar mentioned about, you know, uh, we were talking about uh, involvement through transparencies. Any collaboration, um, you know, we get into requires some degree of trust, you know, be it with an institution or be it with within communities, be it with, uh, you know, group of people. And we need to ensure that there, there has to be, we need to establish a clear communication channel. So collaborative partnership should, uh, you know, kind of establish clear channel of communications, ensuring uh, that all these stakeholders have a platform to express their thoughts, concerns, and ideas. Any partnership where these things are not discussed, where there is no open communications, uh, the high chances that it won't be successful, right? So it's always better to have these conversations, you know, way in advance. Sharing information and resources, like openly discussing project details, goals, timelines, you know, and any potential challenges which you see with, uh, you know, by sharing information with the partners and partners can make informed decision and they can work together towards a common objective. When there is a collaboration with a for-profit institution uh, or a non-profit institution, both the scenarios would be different. When it comes to a for-profit institution, they also would need to uh, be informed about potential challenges, uh, goals, and timelines. Based on that, they might need to secure you know, specific permissions. And similar, it happens with government as well. The collaboration with different institutions might be different, but then the key of uh, closing the deal uh, and building trust and transparency is kind of similar. The exercise of building relationship is similar. The third one is setting clear expectation, right? So we need to definitely ensure that uh, whenever you are seeking out for a partnership, there has to be a clearly defining roles, responsibilities and kind of expectation. It is essential, uh, you know, for building trust. Uh, when all parties, uh, you know, understand their respective roles and uh, what is expected, you know, of them, it minimizes misunderstanding and, uh, you know, promotes uh, accountability within each individual or, or each parties. Sometimes it happens that a partnership, in partnership, you get into a rush, try to do the deal, and then there is no uh, clear uh, uh, you know, def definition of who is going to be working on what. The partner is expecting that, okay, we will be, uh, we'll be getting, the partner is get, will be getting us support in uploading the documents. But actual scenario is you are expecting their resources to get trained and upload, uh, uh, you know, their, their resources on uh, Wikisource, for an example, right? So defining clearly their roles and responsibility, what it entails ahead is important, you know, in building the trust. And these kind of conversation, if it happens before, it basically, uh, you know, uh, sets clear expectations. Yeah. Right. Next one is resolving conflicts effectively. So conflicts are part of any collaboration, to be honest. You know, if there is no conflict, then uh, I don't think so. The partnership is going right. Definitely, there has to be questions. There has to be some sort of conflict. But then there are partnership, you know, where there is no conflict. It's like-minded organizations with similar goal who understand our uh, movement pretty well. There you won't find much of conflict. But then in general, in India, for an example, if you try work with any uh, uh, ministry, any... Uh, for-profit, non-profit institutions, those who don't understand uh, Wikimedia ecosystem, there will be a lot of doubts. There will be a lot of queries. So it's best to, you know, answer uh, 
I'd clarify their question uh, to the best of your abilities. So collaborative partnerships, uh, you know, kind of should adopt a, a, a proactive approach to conflict resolution. Uh, how we can do that by encouraging, you know, open discussion, actively listening to what is their queries, you know, and finding mutually beneficial uh, solution. Partnership is all about, uh, you know, ensuring the, it's it's a mutual benefit to both the organization. If there is no mutual benefit, obviously there, there cannot be a partnership. This demonstrate, uh, you know, our uh, commitment to transparency and fostering trust by showing a willingness to address and resolve any issue which arises in the partnership. Right. The last one is building relationship based on integrity. So collaborative partnership, you know, should prioritize ethical conduct, honesty, and fairness in interactions. You know, this includes uh, honoring, you know, commitments, respecting confidentiality. There are partnerships where partners share confidential data. It could be around, uh, uh, you know, their user base. It could be something else. Uh, they need to ensure that there is a confidentiality which we need to respect and also being accountable for you know one's action by upholding these principles generally you know partners can build strong trustworthy relationship that is the reason whenever you are having a partnership many times you get into an mou uh, uh, right or an agreement now uh, the General partnership dynamic framework, you know, what do I mean by this? Like partnership, it's just four different small steps. Uh, now the partnership dynamics, you know, framework, uh, theoretical name, you know, is kind of a structured approach that uh, kind of outlines the stages, uh, uh, you know, and consideration involved in developing and managing, uh, you know, any partnership. So, what is initiation? Initiation is a stage, you know, where you kind of identifying potential partners. Uh, you start discussing about it, exploring opportunities. Could be identifying partners, you know, who share similar goals, shared goals and objectives. Uh, and, uh, you know, assessing partners' compatibility. Then... The moment we are able to identify some of the organization which we feel that, okay, they are aligned with us, they share similar goal, then we come into a next stage that's called planning. So in planning, partners, you know, you strike a conversation with a partner, you start working together to develop a detailed partnership plan, including goals, roles, responsibilities, and timelines, okay. where... Uh, you know, it's also around uh, developing a partnership agreement, outlining kind of expectation and commitment. You are also channelizing, you know, uh, when it comes to partnership, communication is an important role, uh, plays an important role. So you try to establish a communication channel and protocols to ensure that, you know, there's an open communication between, you know, both the organization. And it's also a phase where you do a needs assessment to determine resources and support one would require for the collaboration, right? Okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm just reading out kind of notes which I have put together. Hope oh, you won't mind them. Now the execution phase. <laughs> Uh, generally, in execution phase, um, you know, we talk about how do we want to execute a collaboration and a partnership, right? So when it comes to execution, it's important for you to know, uh, you know, different timelines and the strategies which you have set. You wanted to ensure that um, it kind of, um, you know, uh, uh, it it. Uh, you're, you're kind of, uh, you know, uh, depending on the partnership outcomes, you try to follow these execution um, and important lessons or the plans which you have put in place. An example would be, 
when we are trying to make a um, you know application or Wikipedia application live on uh, geo platforms, the stage you know uh, where we were talking about execution was uh, you know of understanding how the application will go live. What are the ways through which we can conduct regular evaluation? What are the datas we can expect, uh, um, you know, from, um, uh, from, from Geo, for an example, which can give us a good feedback, um, you, you know, uh, from a perspective of, uh, from a perspective of an of an organization which is. Uh, disseminating our content through their platforms. And this kind of activities generally help us document our success, you know, which uh, helps in improving our collaborations. And this results into the, uh, you know, next stage of uh, evaluations where whenever we are doing, um, you know, any sort of uh, evaluation, uh, these strategies or the data points which we received, you know, from the partner help in evaluating our partnership. It helps in risk mitigation as well. Many times it happens with us that we get into a partnership and we try to, um, you know, we get into a partnership, we try to get things done in a way that it's a bit informal. Now what happens with those? When we do things informally at our level, you know, these institutions, they believe that there has to be a process which helps in documenting it. Well, if there is no documentation, it uh, does not, you know, help them getting visibility at a later stage. They are also not able to evaluate, uh, you know, how successful the collaborations are going to be. So whenever we are adapting uh, a collaboration, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, whenever we are adapting any strategies for collaboration during the execution phase, we need to be sure that we are aware of, you know, any challenges, real-time problems which we face. And also we should be aware of, you know, how things are going to work in general. And these... Uh, outcomes or the feedbacks which we receive through the partnership, through the partners, help in evaluating the overall, uh, uh, our overall performance or, uh, you know, how we are functioning as a partner. Now, again, in terms of, uh, you know, partnerships dynamic framework, when we are talking about partnerships, these are the four things which we need to keep it in mind whenever you know we are getting into any collaboration this could be a small community collaborations you are collaborating with an institution you are collaborating with a library or even if you are collaborating with uh, uh, with uh, tech organizations uh, these are the framework which one has to keep it in mind and i think it's in general you know happens but we don't keep it in uh, we don't uh, you know formal uh, formally follow it any, I'll just take a break and ask you if there is any questions. Are there any questions? If not, probably we can move ahead. I was wondering about the role of universities in uh, when it comes to collaboration. How Wikimedia, uh, Wikimedia possibilities? Since uh, you referred to uh, Telangana, uh, in Telangana you have uh, instituted some sort of uh, pro Indic project, right? Uh, yeah. You are working on Telugu and uh, beginning with Telugu, right? Right. So it's triple IT, uh, IT uh, uh, Hyderabad, right? So, so two things. Uh, triple IT Hyderabad is a different institution and the uh, Ministry of Language and Culture is a different institution. Yeah. Then, you know, we did a collaboration. So, 
which collaboration are you referring to? Uh, triple ITU. I'm in uh, Triple ITU project in uh, Indic Wiki. Okay. So uh, I would. Yeah. So, Please. So I was wondering about the possibilities of uh, collaborating with uh, central universities uh, in India. That what the kind of landscape at policy level, government facilitates and the challenges they they bring into. I mean, when it comes to collaboration. So from your end, how do you look at the landscape of uh, collaboration in India, especially with the central universities like uh, JNU, Jamia, and other central universities, University of Delhi? Have there been some uh, talks regarding? Uh, so yeah, whenever we are having an institution collaboration, specifically, uh, you know, let me give you an example of triple IIT. When it comes to triple IIT, the aim of collaboration is, uh, is you know, since it's a research institution, we wanted to enable, uh, you know, research and tech, uh, equals, uh, enable research and tech institutions through them in India to participate more into, you know, Wikimedia research and technology development. And that, that it was. Now it depends, you know, what sort of collaboration we are seeking with other universities. There are other universities which whom we are seeking collaborations, but it could be different, you know. Uh, with uh, Jamia, probably the collaboration would be around getting the manuscripts or the documents which they have, you know, getting it on Wikisource. The other collaboration could be from the perspective of, um, uh, from the perspective of, you know, it could be like resource sharing. Universities have resources, students, you know, research scholars. That's the biggest repository, you know, which we can ever get. What if we get, you know, their time in terms of uh, creating article contribution on on your wikis? Those are could be another example. The could there could be more examples like this, uh, but it depends, you know, what are the area of focus, and every university and institution might have their different focus areas. Please, uh, Safdar, uh, please go ahead. Yeah, hi. So just a follow up to Faisal's question. Uh, so you talk, you talk about Jamia, like, uh, uh, okay. So let, let's, let us consider Central University. So generally speaking, these Central universities, uh, they uh, uh, are in some sense not providing kind of the kind of elite edu education in some sense. I mean, uh, uh, by some sense, I mean, at least in sciences and arts, that's what the status is. So as uh, uh, as some as an as an organization which is promoting uh, information and maybe you know uh, education or whatever, uh, uh, so can you be a kind of uh, aid to these uh, central universities uh, in dispersing these uh, 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 proper education to their students? I mean, rather than utilizing their resources, can you utilize their resources such that these resources are are the perfectly uh, uh, matched to the cap capabilities of their students. Okay. Uh, uh, so, so thereby aiding uh, the purpose of these universities itself. Yeah. So many times, uh, you know, we have an interesting program called Reading Wikipedia in Classroom, right? So that kind of fits, you know, well, when it comes to uh, an educational institution where they would want to gain knowledge on how, you know, they can utilized you know best utilized uh, wikipedia content and wikipedia and sister projects content uh, uh, into their academia in general and how the student can benefit now uh, when it comes to you know can we create an entire ecosystem where students can uh, the learnings can be imparted through wikipedia is that doable I think that's a question, uh, you know, back to the universities. I don't think so, you know, they would want to do that. But Wikipedia, you know, could be the first research tool. One could, you know, land up to while learning about any topic. Uh, you know, they can find references. So this can definitely be, you know, one of the research point. Wikipedia could be one of the ways of uh, one of the tool, um, you know, related to uh, digital safety. Uh, right. And in the world of fake news, probably this could be utilized in understanding how 
um, um, you know, one can differentiate between fake news and um, and a good news, right? A right news. So uh, that is there. But then apart from this, uh, it totally depends on, you know, how uh, the university or the institution is kind of thinking, you know, their objective could be probably they have uh, many literature books or manuscripts, which is take, getting dusted, uh, which is just eating dust. And they wanted to preserve it for their future scholars to, you know, refer it at a later stage. This could be an activity where, you know, with the help of uh, Wikimedia community, we collaborate, we, um, you know, scan those books, get it on source, Wikisource, get the help of the university, uh, you know, since they have uh, research scholars, they have students, um, and they help in transcribing those books. This helps in creating a digital repository, which can be utilized, uh, uh, you know, in imparting education in the institution at a later stage. Yeah, we appreciate your answer. Um, yeah. So, moving ahead, um, you know, finding the right fit, uh, when it comes to collaboration, you know, it's like we might feel like every collaboration is the right fit, right? We can do this with them, we can do this with, you know, uh, this institution, that institution, but when seeking a partnership, you know, the most important um, thing isn't just, you know, what they can do for Wikipedia. It's also rather, it should be like, we share the same fundamental values. Um, let's work on, you know, how we want to go, right? So this is a win chart, you know, which I prepared generally when whenever you're doing any collaboration, probably you can do the same. Where first you talk about, you know, what are our principles, neutrality, verifiability, open knowledge, and um, uh, what sort of uh, uh, partnership want to focus on, uh, you know, the partner institution want to focus on, they might be interested in to uh, increase visibility. I'm just taking for an example, right? So increase visibility, digitization of their content and engagement, um, uh, you know, uh, with the institution could be their priority. Now, we need to find a sweet spot, <laughs> you know, and that sweet spot is nothing but a shared goals. This is where the, you know, magic happens. Maybe uh, you know, they might be interested into improving local history articles by um, um, attracting more visitors to the museum. And this could be an example, you know, of a museum collaborating with you, creating more content around around them. Maybe it's student gaining research skill and filling gaps in important topic. Um, so it, it has to be a win-win scenarios. Okay, now uh, I can. Uh, sorry, just going to give you a uh, you know a, an example of Wikimedia Foundation and Google. Um, how did we you know define this collaboration? What sort of um, areas we identify as the common shared goals, and then we start exploring the collaboration. So when it comes to, uh, on the left-hand circle, you can see Wikimedia Foundation. We say that we wanted to have a universal access to free knowledge, global reach. We wanted a global reach. We uh, collaborative content creation. That's what we believe in. And neutrality and verifiability is something you know we wanted. Now, these are our goals. Now, Google, as an organization, they wanted to focus on organizing the world information. It's a Google search, right? So it, they just wanted to collect information. Google mission is to organize, you know, vast amount of information and make it readily accessible. They wanted to ensure that their, you know, search uh, um, efficiency is high, improving the accuracy and relevance of search result. They wanted to, uh, you know, ensure that people are able to quickly search the content. They also uh, focusing on knowledge accessibility, um, you know, um, uh, at a distance place, people are able to instantly search for a factual information within search. Plus also they are focusing on technological innovation. Now the overall 
overlapping areas here in this collaboration was dissemination of knowledge, right? Both of us wanted to work on our knowledge. One, Google is disseminating knowledge. Uh, we also wanted to share knowledge, right? So both uh, entities aim to share, you know, reliable knowledge widely and reduce barriers, barriers to access. Then combating misinformation. Um, we wanted to battle the spread of false information with um, right information, uh, with right with a correct standard of accuracy. The third point was around user empowerment. So both of us believe that we wanted to provide tools that allow users, you know, critical evaluate, uh, you know, sorry, um, uh, use a tool that can help them evaluate critical information and be informed, right? And the third and the last one was around global impact, right? Google also wanted to create a global impact with the content they have. We also believe in the same. We're reaching to audiences, uh, you know, across um, diverse regions and languages uh, is what we want to do. Now, uh, here in this dynamics, you know, partnerships evolve over time. It's not going to happen immediately. The moment you have a discussion, you get into this. So shared goals could be, uh, you know, is one of the factor through which you start having conversation with the partner. Then we get into a specific conversation around collaboration. As you might have heard, Google um, uh, and Wikimedia Foundation is working with Hindi Wikipedia community, Hindi uh, uh, Wikimedia user groups uh, to enhance content in Hindi um, uh, uh, search right now followed with other languages, definitely. But we are starting with this language at this moment. And that was, you know, our specific project, which we wanted to focus on. And we know the audience, uh, you know, in general, that the uh, collaboration is emphasizing is on a shared goal that is improving, uh, you know, gaining access to the community, you know, with the relevant tool they would require to create content. Also, we wanted to ensure that, you know, we prioritize free knowledge and editorial independence. So that was all about, um, you know, an example related to Google and Wikimedia Foundation. And with this, I had come to almost the, uh, the last slides um, of mine. I know uh, we are almost at time and it is the time when we can talk, we can discuss uh, more about, you know, you can be the next partnership catalyst. So ethical partnership, I just wanted to revise that. Ethical partnership is all about finding common ground, open communication, and making Wikipedia and sister projects stronger, right? So these are the common goals. Um, these are the ethical partnership, uh, you know, which we need to find, uh, common grounds which we need to find in any collaboration. Uh, from a Wikipedia point of view, um, minus the Wikipedia, uh, you know, and sister projects, and there you goes with any collaboration you wanted to do with any organization, uh, uh, you know, outside Wikimedia as well. So I hope, um, you know, this helps you start thinking, um, help you inspired, and also start thinking about who in your community, you know, might be that amazing uh, Wikipedia partner and is there any ideas question probably if I can help you with I'll be happy to you know answer I'll be happy to brainstorm on it too. please feel free to drop in your questions comments uh, in the chat box so you can also uh, unmute yourself uh, in the meanwhile I I have a couple of uh, things uh, Praveen uh, like as you mentioned uh, about the possibilities of a digital repos repositories, right? So are there also ways in which uh, we can uh, collaborate, Wikimedia collaborate with, uh, you know, about open uh, access initiative in academia where uh, journals and books are being published in open access mode, right? So are there, uh, when it comes to open digital repositories, ar archive.org and in, uh, also JSTOR also comes to, uh, comes to my mind, like how are they archiving and making things available to uh, 
a, a greater number of audience, right? So are there such, such projects at Wikimedia which allow such kind of collaboration with open access uh, journals or uh, things in academia which in which Wikimedia acts as a repository of those things similar to archive or JSTOR? Yeah. Um, you know, to be honest, I, I tried doing the same, you know, with some of the universities. Okay. Before. And so the challenges which I faced was, well, when it comes to open journaling, um, you know, publishing anyone's research, right. they have to rely on the top published journals, you know. And Wikipedia um, or sister projects is not among them. That becomes, you know, one of the barrier. Um, but then again, you know, this could be interesting. Also, there are some collaboration, active collaboration with uh, archive.org, which I'm not currently aware of. I don't have a clear detail of, but then this is something which you can find it on Meta or I can, you know, dig in more information and share it with you at the latest stage. Okay, sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you for the response. Uh, I, another another uh, tangent which uh, while listening to you, like uh, the question of uh, in recent part, I mean, the last decade, there were many wiki, uh, wiki conferences in India, right? Beginning with Bombay and recent in Hyderabad, right? So uh, can one also look at these uh, conferences as, as a forms of collaboration? Yes, it was form of a collaboration. Right. So um you know about you know fcra because of that um uh, you know getting funds was quite challenging hence we collaborated with institutions to provide access you know to funds to the community and through which we were able to jointly host uh, some of the successful events you have heard in the past uh, including wiki women camp um, and um, uh, you know wiki conference india Thank you. Thank you for the response, brother. Yes, please feel free uh, Feel free to uh, post your questions or you can unmute yourself and ask. When you asked about uh, Praveen, uh, what is ethical collaboration? So I, I mean, when it, uh, it takes, I mean, and nowadays, uh, in the context of uh, contemporary times, so ethics is mostly centered around human, right? <laughs> it's a human-centric ethics, right? So how does Wikimedia also get, uh, is rethinking the idea of uh, non-humans in terms of, I, I understand this is not, uh, it's all, we are not collaborating with as such uh, non-human forms of life, right? But uh, how is it the question of ethics uh, revolves around and goes beyond what is so so to say quote unquote human hmm. um to be honest you know it's it's a fine thin fine line you know which you may need to define to, and and you need to distinguish with but again when it comes to uh, you know ethical collaboration now ai is going a, you know yeah, it's a non human player <laughs> non human player I know yes. we uh, uh, many times, you know, people think, okay, why can't we generate our information through AI and post it on Wiki? Right. And why do we need Wiki, you know, when we can get information from AI? But in general, you know, we need to think uh, uh, from from the perspective of verifiability and source, you know, uh, identifying a true source of information, which is uh, there on Wikis right now. And these AI generally, uh, you know, uh, take Wiki as a training data set and tried learning more about it, right? And also at this moment, they don't, like none of the generative AI technology shows you where they're getting information from. And uh, with this Wikimedia Foundation, uh, you know, product team also partnered with uh, ChatGPT. They developed a plugin around Wikipedia where after installing the plugin, if you ask a question, it quotes and unquotes, you know, from Wikipedia with source. So you can now rely on those information. So we are not behind. We are thinking about, you know, how, what are the ways through which we can work with the AI? Definitely AI would need us. Um, we are not going to be absolute, but at the same time, uh, you know, we can 
think of a collaborative or a you know uh, interesting ways through which we can serve information through AI. Right, right, right. Thank you, Praveen. Thank you for your, I mean, for these interesting responses, <laughs> cute responses, I would say. <laughs> uh, so with this, uh, uh, we come to this uh, end of this conversation hour. And I am really thankful and grateful to Praveen for sp sparing his time and coming and joining this conversation hour and especially accepting our invitation. Uh, thank you so much, Praveen. And uh, we also uh, are happy, I mean, we extend our heartfelt gratitude to all those who joined today and uh, and uh, asked questions, participated in the conversation. And uh, we are really looking forward to seeing many of you. And in fact, uh, all of you in the next, uh, in the next uh, uh, DCW conversation hour in May 2024. With this, take care. Goodbye. Thank you so much.